What is up, guys? Uh, we are back. I'm your host, Brock. We're talking sports. I have my co-host here, Zach. Uh, we are talking sports here today. Um, first up, we have MLB. Uh, sad news here. The Cubs organization has laid off 25% of its business staff due to lost, loss in revenue. Um... Yeah, they didn't make it to the playoffs to make it up. They did make it to the playoffs, actually. Yeah, but they didn't make it to the bubble where they actually were allowing fans. Yeah. Make it up. But yeah, uh, they laid off 25% of its business staff. Uh, that is pretty bad there. Uh, it's unfortunate, but I mean, I saw a thing here yesterday and the MLB said that it's expected to lose 8.3 billion dollars in revenue um which is really really bad and there's some uncertainty of how the uh of how next year is going to go um so that is really really bad for MLB but allow okay I'll say this for MLB uh, do what the end of Right. Do what some of the teams are in the NFL are doing, like the Colts and the Ravens and the Eagles and the Chiefs and the Browns and the Jags. Allow a certain amount of fans. They are season. now in the playoffs. No, for, for the season. They're going to do that next year. They're definitely going to do that next year. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, I thought that was only out to uh, season ticket orders. But I mean, like, allow non-season ticket orders to come into the stadium and spread them out accordingly. And like the Colts are doing, the Colts allowed 12,500 fans at Lucas Oil Stadium on Sunday before their bye against the Bengals. I was there. My dad was there. We were two out of the 12,500. I mean... The Ravens just allowed fans in this, like, what, a couple weeks ago? Mm-hmm. And so did the Eagles, and I don't know what the Packers are going to allow fans in at all this season, but, <coughs> excuse me, but, I mean, just do that. Allow a certain number amount of fans in the stadiums and get that, get at least some of that revenue back. Because you're going to need it. Yeah. Um, but it certainly is sad. Um, but it is how it is. But next year, I think revenue will start to come back with fans in the stadium and the attendance starting to get back up for next season. The Miami Marlins are parting ways with their president of baseball operations, Michael Hill. He was president of operations for the Marlins for six years. They parted ways with him this week or last week. Um, And also, Clayton Kershaw made history uh, yesterday, I do believe. Uh, He, no, he, uh, two days ago, he passed Justin Verlander in most postseason strikeouts. He is the uh, post. He leads all time in postseason strikeouts. He has two hundred and seven strikeouts. Uh, congratulations to him. And the Dodgers can win the World Series tonight for the first time in thirty-two years. Um, the Dodgers just need to win one more game. It's Game Six tonight. Uh, but yeah, Rays are. Needing to win these next two games to win the World Series. Dodgers only need to win one. Uh, but yeah, that game six will be tonight. Um, now we will go to, uh, some, uh, college football news. Did we talk about Odell? Beckham, wait, not, not about the injury, but, like, the situation at LSU. No, we did not. We did not talk about that last night or last week because I think that came out a day after we did the last podcast. Yeah. So, guys, LSU. This is 
pretty crazy. So Odell Beckham Jr. went to LSU, um, and now he is banned there. What? what? During the college football playoff last year. Yes. <laughs> he is now banned there for two years after he handed out cash to the players after after they won the national championship. Um, and then there was some more news after they after LSU announced that they were banning him that LSU is now losing eight scholarships for the football program and they are charged with a level three violation uh, that is involving Odell Beckham who gave two thousand dollars in cash to four LSU football players after the uh, win uh, yeah so not even El- not even Odell got in trouble. Uh, Odell's actions now have LSU football team in trouble. Um, but but it's amazing that it took them this long. Yeah. To punish Odell and LSU for Odell Odell's actions. That happened in what? February or January or December? Yeah. December last year, probably? December or January. I think it was January. Whenever the championship game was. Oh, January 13th. Okay. So, it took, um, what? January? 11? 10 or 11 months? that LSU has to face those punishments for Odell's actions there. Uh, but yeah, now we go to some congratulations. Uh, give a hand to the Rutgers football team. Um, they have won a Big Ten game for the first time in three years. First time in 21 games. They beat Michigan State uh, last Saturday. Uh yeah, big accomplishment for Rutgers, and man, Michigan State, losing to Rutgers, we've all been saying, if you lose to Rutgers, you basically should be ashamed of yourselves, because Rutgers has been known for being one of the worst football teams, and questioned by many to wonder why they are in the Big Ten itself. Um, this team has lost non-conference games to teams that we have never heard of. (laughs) Never heard of. Um, but yeah, they beat... What? Go ahead. Go ahead. You can. Go ahead. Um, I'd say I I watched the Rutgers game, although it was against a no-defense Michigan State. Um, Rutgers impressed me with how they played, how well they played. So I think Rutgers can be a force to be reckoned with this year. Now, let's not go that far. Oh, okay. They're not going to win the, they're not going to win the Big Ten. They're not going to. No, they're not going to, of course, they're going to win games. How many? I don't know their schedule, so I, I'd say about half their games. Really? I was going to say two or three. 
they're they're gonna probably win. I don't know. I I I'd have to look at the schedule, okay? But right now, I'm saying at least half of their games. Five and five is not bad, okay? You're going. You're playing a ten game schedule. Going five and five is not bad. Mhm. Winning half their games is not bad for me. Especially when the Rutgers. Yeah, yes. So uh, I I'd say they win half their games, if not three or four of their games this season. Yeah. By how well they impressed me from last year. Because they obviously sucked last year. Not even last year, like for, for the past couple years. I mean, you're talking about a team that hasn't won a Big Ten game in three seasons. Um, not even just last year, three years. But yeah, I wouldn't go that far to like four to five games. I would say two to three. Um, I would say two to three. I mean, they did impress me, but. They're the Rutgers to me still. You, congratulations! You beat a really bad football team in Michigan State. Um, <laughs> but yeah, congrats to Rutgers though for doing that. And Indiana takes down number eight Penn State in one of the craziest finishes we've seen in a while. Uh, I I was watching that game live. That was insane. That was literally insane. I, when he went towards the goal line and he stretched out, I was like, oh, that, that, it took a while on replay. Here's the thing about that. The day after, okay, if you slow it down, I mean, way down, okay, way down to the point where it's frame by frame per second. You see the ball hit the ground before it hits the pile. Now, the technology probably, or the review technology that college football probably has, probably the same as NFL, right? You kind of see it frame by frame, like second by second, though. So you aren't going to, they aren't going to capture that ball hitting the ground first, they're just going to see the ball kind of skimming the ground and hitting the pylon. So, you can't really overturn a a call that says, or that shows it skimming the ground and then hitting the pylon. So, I, you, technically got lucky on that call right there. Yeah, but still, I loved it. Oh, I loved oh, it. Too, but it's the fact that the day after the NCAA took a second look at, at it and said, "Oh no, it actually hit the ball, it hit the ground, it hit, it hit the turf first. Well, then it's too late it, now. Uh, exactly, it's too late now. Too late. <coughs> so, I mean, yeah. No matter what the what what the call was and what it should have been, the result is final. Um, but yeah, the game itself was absolutely as absurd uh, to watch. That game that was crazy. Uh, some sad news now: Alabama wide receiver who is uh, future. First round draft pick Jalen Waddle is out for the season with a high ankle sprain and an ankle fracture uh, on one of the opening kickoffs in their game. Uh, that was really uh, sad to hear and see. Uh, and you know it's a really bad injury when CBS doesn't show a replay on the play. Um, but yeah. Going back on horrible injuries, the NFL should have never replayed Dax. Yeah. On national television. Mm-hmm. 
never replayed that. Yeah, I I got sick to my stomach watching that replay. I was watching it with my dad, and once we saw that, we screamed and ran upstairs. Um, it it was it was horrifying. Uh, yeah, just just brutal that like seeing a guy like Jalen Waddle, who will be a no a, a first round draft pick, have a season ended uh, like that. And who knows, it, it might affect him in the draft. It might affect him coming back because you just think about having surgery and then rehab and all that. Um, it certainly stinks. Certainly stinks there. Uh, but yeah, now we will go to the NFL. Um, so Dwayne Haskins has been fined for breaking COVID-19 protocol. Uh, that happened, I think, last week, I do believe. And the NFL fined the Tennessee Titans $350,000 for COVID-19 violations. Uh, th this goes from, uh, players and staff not wearing masks and everything to not socially distance. But yeah, they fined them $350,000, uh, for that. Uh... But yeah, COVID serious thing, and the NFL is finding everybody that's not uh, following the protocol. Now we have some sad news here. Odell Beckham Jr. We we were talking about how he got uh, banned from LSU for that uh, incident with giving out money. He tore his ACL. His season has been cut short. Um, but yeah. There's been a lot of injuries, a lot of season enders, torn ACLs, everything like that. It's just sad to see so many players get their season cut short, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, no matter who the player is, um, it's, always, it's always sad to see a player go down. Yeah. And the, the impact that it has on a team, too, like knowing, like, any player that has something like that, it impacts your team. But especially, like, we've seen a lot of the big-name players go down, and that s seriously affects your team in every way possible. I mean, you're talking about Odell Beckham Jr., Dak Prescott, um, Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley. It, it really, really affects your team in uh, a big way uh, and it stinks that that happens too and it's been happening a lot this season as well um, but yeah uh, Antonio Brown uh, I just heard it has been a fit announced officially today he signed a one year contract he is on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers his contract maxes out at $2.5 million with a base of $1 million, 250000 per game active bonuses, just means must make the playoffs, 250000 for 45 plus catches, 250000 for 650 receiving yards, 250 k for 6 plus touchdowns, and 750000 for winning the Super Bowl. Um, but yeah. AB, uh, on a team, and it's on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And it was announced that he won't be able to play this coming week, but he will be available week 10. Uh, week, nine. week 9. Yeah, week 9. Um, but yeah, AB on the Buccaneers, what do you think about this? I mean, if you were watching, uh... Friday night, or, uh, Friday night Lights with Tony Dungy and, and whatever that program is called. Tony Dungy basically, uh, and they were talking about A.B. joining the Bucks, and he, he, Tony Dungy said that it's basically COVID policy or COVID um, procedure or COVID um, insurance because if Sam Mike Evans went out with 
uh, COVID and had to uh, quarantine, or Chris Goodwin, or Jones. Um, you have another star receiver to to play, and that being a B. So, I I think it's COVID insurance, but I also think that it's good for a team that's um that could or that saying. Mike Evans' hamstring is probably worse than than what it is, although he is still playing. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, the, to me, I mean, it's good for the Buccaneers, but it's going to be interesting on how AB plays, on how AB does off the field as well. You just remember everything that's gone off the field with AB. Um, hope it doesn't happen, but you never know. Uh, but yeah, he signed today. It was official. Uh, and now we get into some uh, serious and happy uh, thing uh, that happened. Ron Rivera, the head coach for the Carolina Panthers, Finished his cancer treatments and did all of them without missing a single game. You mean the Washington football team? Washington, Washington. I, I still remember him from Carolina. That's right. Whoops. But yeah, uh, it's it's a uh, cool to see that he's done with all his cancer treatments and he did it without missing a single game. Uh, what what do you think about this? I saw the video of him leaving. The uh, hospital, it was pretty emotional. Uh, what What are your thoughts on this? I, I think that Ron Rivera is a very good coach. He is a fighter through this while going through chemotherapy and, and uh, coaching the games. I think that's amazing. I think back to... Um, Trent Pagano, how he did that, how he was a fighter too, coaching for the Indianapolis Colts and uh, going to cancer treatment. Um, so I, I think that both of those coaches, what they went through, are 100% fighters and mm-hmm. um, uh, are totally blessed with the uh, amount of support that they had around them during this time. So, yeah, man. It's... The, the video is heartwarming. Um, it's inspirational. It's it's emotional. Um, yeah, man. I, I love Ron Rivera as a head coach. I love what he stands for. How he treats his team, uh, his team and his... Um, his players, he treats them like family. If you've heard how he treats, they're treated. Uh, the Panthers organization, uh, that's how he, that's what he brought to Washington, and it shows. Yeah. Um, certainly, th- that was a pretty big deal there that he finished his cancer treatments, and he is really a true fighter there, uh, but now we go from serious to, uh, a funny thing here, uh, the Cowboys defensive coordinator had to pause his press conference after he got Tabasco sauce in his eye. Um, yes, that actually did happen, I saw the video, um, he went like this, and then went, ooh, and then he had to get a cloth and stopped it for a little bit and he admitted to everyone that he just rubbed he had tabasco sauce in, on his finger and he rubbed it into his eye uh, and then they had to take like a five to ten minute break for him to get uh back to normal uh that that was pretty funny to see uh 
2020, man. Anything that can happen. I mean, COVID, the getting hot sauce in your eye. I mean, look out. Anything's possible. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was pretty funny to hear. Um, now, uh, we go to power rankings. Power rankings are here. Surprise, surprise, the New York, uh, football squad is 32 and 31. Jets are, uh, uh, 32. Giants are 31. 30 is the Jags. 29 is the Falcons. 28 is Washington. 27 Bengals. 26 are the Texans. Okay, I have a problem with the Bengals being... Yeah. Because they're really good. Although they have one, what, one game? They're really good. Yeah. I, I, I don't get why the Bengals are still so low. Must be record, right? I mean, it could be record, but... I think it's also performance too, but if you're basing on it off of solely of record, I get it. But if you're basing off performance as well, then they 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 have to be higher than the low twenties. Yeah, I I'm just reading this thing here. This is pretty big news here. It's not official, but there there's trade talks going on right now with the New England Patriots. The Patriots have talked about trading 2019 Defensive Player of the Year, Stephon Gilmore. Um, that That's pretty big. Why, mean, why would they trade one of their best defensive players? I have no idea. After so many, after, after so many of them, like, opted out of the season. They have, like, what, eight defensive players out up that opted out? And that's reported by his agent. Um, so that has to be true then that the agent said that uh, the Patriots have been trying to trade. Um, that's pretty big news. Uh, we'll keep an eye out on that. Nothing there official, but it's interesting that they're trying to trade him. Twenty uh, six is the Texans. Uh, Twenty five is the Cowboys. Um, 24 Vikings, 23 Broncos, 22 Lions, 21 Eagles, 20 Chargers, 19 Dolphins, 18 Patriots, 17 Panthers, 16 Raiders, 15 49ers, 14 Browns, 13 Colts, 12 Bears. We flex in between 11 and 13 every week. I don't get it. <laughs> the 11 is the Cardinals. 10 is the Rams. 9 Saints. 8 Bills. 7 Bucks. 6 Titans. 5 Packers. By the way, we have a new number one. Four Ravens, three Seahawks, two Chiefs, and one is the Pittsburgh Steelers. Alright, so after that mishap, I'm just going to make my picks for now. Um, first one we have is the Falcons and the Panthers. I have the Panthers in this game. Now, Saints and Bears. I have the Saints, unfortunately, in that one. Pats and Bills. I have the Bills in this one. Titans, Bengals, I got the Titans. Raiders, Browns, I got the Browns. Colts, Lions, I got Colts. Vikings, Packers, I have Packers. Jets and Chiefs, I have Chiefs by like 200. Rams and Dolphins, I have the Rams. Steelers and Ravens, that's a good one. I have the Ravens. Steelers are, will be no longer undefeated. Uh, Chargers and Broncos, I have the Chargers. 49ers, Seahawks, I have the Seahawks. Cowboys and Eagles, I have Eagles, Bucks, Giants, I have the Bucks. Okay, and now, uh, Zach has sent me his picks. 
Uh, so he has the Bucks, the Eagles, Seahawks, Chargers, Ravens, Rams, Chiefs, Colts, Packers, Raiders, Bills, Saints, Falcons, Bengals. Those are who he has winning. Alright guys, so the podcast today, we had some technical difficulties, but we got it through. Um, we Everybody has some tef- technical difficulties. It, it had to come somehow. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be the podcast. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Click the bell so you don't miss any more videos. Uh, make sure to leave a like on the video. I'll see you all later. Peace.